Hi everyone, I'm Dana Shibley with the company Verifile. All of us here at Verifile are extremely pleased about the partnership that we have in place with CPA Canada. All of you as CPA Canada members should know that as a result of this partnership, you get access to the paid version of Verifile, the premium version of Verifile, which is Verifile Pro at no charge to you or anyone at all with whom you'd like to share information. You get access to the full suite of capabilities inside of your Verifile Pro system, including the ability to brand it as you would like, and also unlimited electronic signatures capability. You can access your Verifile Pro system by simply going to verifile.com slash CPA Canada, and please be prepared to enter your member number there. Quick caveat here, I am not an accounting or tax expert. However, I am going to be showing you some general sharing examples to stress the key concepts of use behind Verifile and get you up and rolling with your system as quickly as possible. You should know that there are currently people using Verifile mainly for sharing purposes. Others use Verifile primarily for storage purposes. Some people use Verifile for securely sharing information with their colleagues internally, whereas other professionals use Verifile exclusively for securely sharing sensitive information back and forth with their clients. Others still use Verifile for securely and selectively sharing sensitive personal or family information. And I'll be going through a number of these examples as we move forward. But before we do that, let me first give you some quick background information about Verifile. Verifile is based in Silicon Valley, and we are led by Jack Smith, who is the individual who invented and co-founded the company Hotmail, which was many people's first experience with both email and the internet. He also had key roles with two successful digital security companies, Ironport and Proximax. Verifile, is all about making communication better. And we see two key aspects of communication. Those are security and productivity, neither of which should come at the expense of usability. The reason we place such persistent emphasis on security is that we believe the near-term future of business will be characterized by two types of organizations and professionals those who successfully make that extra effort to protect and secure their own information and that of their constituents and continue to reap the long-term trust relationship benefits that derive from that, and those organizations and professionals who do not protect that information and see a gradual erosion in those trust relationships. We believe that the dividing line between those two types of professionals is going to crystallize in a major way over the next several years. And we want to make sure that all of our users fall on the positive side of that line. So, what is Verifile? Verifile is ultra secure messaging and document sharing and storage all on a single screen. Where in that single screen for each situation that you're working on, whether that be a client engagement, project management, or any kind of sharing or storage of sensitive information, you can see exactly who has access to what information and if and when any single individual has looked at or downloaded any information. So you always have a very heightened sense of situational awareness, not only from your own perspective as the outbound communicator, but in terms of what's going on on the other side of your communication with your client and so forth. We'll see this in action during today's presentation. So. You can think of Verifile as your all-in-one communication power tool, specifically designed for those situations that you have to be absolutely on top of, that must be well-organized and above all, private and secure. That's when you should be thinking about using Verifile. Now, in our secure single screen, we've incorporated the most powerful components of email, cloud file sharing, electronic signatures, and our patented encryption key management technology, CellUcrypt, 
which manages the interaction of six different encryption keys for each time that any individual accesses any single piece of information inside of Verifile. So each data item inside of Verifile has been individually encrypted, such that even if somebody were to break past our encryption, which they won't, all they would be able to access would be a single data item, and that's it. There's no potential for someone to break into Verifile and scoop mass amounts of data to gain what we call bulk access, as they have done with systems like those at J.P. Morgan Chase, Experian, Home Depot, Desjardins, Hilton, Capital One, Life Labs, to the tune of something like 15 million individual data files, or Equifax, to the tune of 145 million individual data files. In fact, with Verifile, there's no real incentive for a hacker to try and break in in the first place because there's not that potential for a large-scale return on that hacker's efforts. And as we go through the demonstration, we're going to see how this security impacts you directly. Okay, so enough of me talking now. Let's go ahead and move into the actual demonstration. As we go through the demo, please do bear in mind that you'll be seeing the system from my perspective, the perspective of a user. And even though Verifile is backed by all this encryption technology, by all of this security, as users, we don't need to create any encryption keys, memorize any encryption keys, manage or share any encryption keys at all in order to benefit from all this. It all happens automatically, completely behind the scenes for us. So let's go ahead and take a look. All of you should now be able to see the sign-in screen or verify. And I'm now going to sign in using my email address and a password. This page can be reached by using any of the major browsers. It doesn't matter whether you're using a Mac, a PC, or a tablet computer. And you should also feel free to use our very handy mobile app if you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in by clicking Next. All right. And I have selected the option inside of Verifile such that an authenticator code is being requested of me. The authenticator code is a code that appears on my mobile device, in this case, my mobile phone, and this authenticator code changes every 30 seconds. The benefit of using such a code is that even if somebody were to somehow get a hold of my password, they still wouldn't be able to access my Verifile system unless they also had my mobile phone. All right? And by the way, I do have the option to click in this little box right here, which essentially indicates to Verifile that Hey, Verifile, if you see a sign-in attempt from the same device that I'm using right now in the future, you can assume that it's me and you don't need to ask me for this additional authenticator code. Okay, so let me go ahead and type that authenticator code in for now. And that brings me into my Verifile Pro system. And the first thing I want to point out is that at the top center of the screen, I can see the CPA Canada logo. All right. So when you're using your Verifile Pro system, if you share information with anybody, that person is going to see that default CPA Canada logo unless you swap that logo out for a logo of your choosing. And you can do that by simply clicking your name at the top right-hand corner of your screen, then going into account settings and adding in any logo that you would like. We'll look at that in more detail in just a few minutes here. But for right now, I want to keep you focused on the home screen here and point out to you that there are essentially two major areas inside of Verifile. Okay, right now, you can see by the fact that the Workspaces tab is highlighted that we're in the Workspaces area. However, let's start out by going into the Contacts area. So I'm going to click on the Contacts tab here at the top left, and now I'm in the Contacts area. And you can see my list of contacts here. This is a list of people with whom I've already communicated securely inside of Verifile or I plan to do so. I can communicate with any of these individuals by simply clicking on their name, click, and now I can see, because I've clicked on Ed Executive's name, that I have a private messages area that has opened up between me and Ed Executive. And down here at the bottom, I can easily type in a message for Ed, and I can click on the paperclip symbol if I would like to, to securely upload a document to share with Ed. Let me show you a real life example. 
let's say that I meet with a new individual and that individual's name is Christine Carson. I want to be able to very quickly have an extremely secure communication with Christine Carson. All I need to do is click on the plus symbol next to the word contact at the top and then I'm going to type in uh, Christine Carson's name here. Christine Carson and I'm going to also type in her email address. Okay, and now I click add. Okay, and you can see that the Verify system has added Christine Carson's name to my contact list here. And in the center here, I can see private messages with Christine Carson. So I'm going to type a quick message for Christine. How about, hello, Christine. Okay, and I'm also going to share a document with Christine. So what do I do? I'm going to go over here and click on the paperclip symbol. By the way, the interface that Christine's going to see on her side is going to look exactly like this as well. Okay. All right, so I'm going to click on the paperclip symbol here. And why don't I go ahead and upload the document GST-159. Okay. So I click Send. Now Verifile has encrypted both the document and the private message, hello, Christine, as they're pulled into the Verifile system. Okay, and I can see the document expanded on over here on the right, and I will be able to click on the year symbol here to do a number of different things, which we'll take a look at in detail in just a few minutes. But for right now, what I wanna keep you focused on is the fact that as I have entered this information into Verifile to communicate with Christine Carson, the Verifile system has automatically, completely behind the scenes, sent an email alert to Christine Carson, which lands in her regular email box. And that email alert indicates to Christine that Dana Shibley, I, using Verifile, is sharing with her a private message and also a document called GST-159. Now, Christine cannot access that private message of hello, Christine, nor the GST-159 document in that email alert. Now, why is that? That's because we don't want to be sending sensitive information back and forth via email. Email is not secure. However, that email alert simply lets Christine know that a private message and the document GST-159 securely await her inside of Verifile. She can click on the link in that email alert, which brings her into Verifile, where she can either create her own password or simply click straight through on an automatically generated password. And that immediately gives her access to both the private message of Hello Christine and also the GST-159 document. The moment that Christine looks at that GST-159 document, I will receive an email alert letting me know that she is looking at it. Okay, if she downloads that GST-159 document, I will instantly receive an email alert letting me know that she has downloaded it. So again, I have this very heightened sense of situational awareness about what's going on on the other side of that communication there. And by the way, if Christine is super cautious and doesn't want to click on that link in that email alert, she can simply go to verifile.com to access that information. Let's go ahead and take a quick look from Christine Carson's perspective. All right, so I'm going to now sign in as Christine Carson. I would have received an email alert or perhaps I was already working inside of Verifile because I'm already a regular user. And in that case, I would simply see the internal alert here. So I, Christine, click on contacts and now I can see the message from Dana Shibley. And the message is, hello, Christine. And I can click here or I can click over here to access the document. And let's say I first decided to take a quick look and preview it. That just sent an email alert to Dana that I looked at the document. Or I can click on download to download the document. And that just sent an email alert to Dana letting him know that I downloaded the document. All right. So let's say that I, Christine, decided to communicate back to Dana. All right, so I thank Dana, and I also ask Dana to bring in my spouse to this communication as well. And 
please bring in my husband, Sammy Spout. Okay. So as Christine, I now click send. And by the way, notice that as Christine, I see the same interface here that Dana saw on his side. So I do have the option to click on the paperclip symbol here to upload a document to Dana if I would like. So for now, I'm just going to type in this message here and click send. All right. Now let's go ahead and switch back over and look from Dana's perspective. All right. So I'm going back in. And now I'm Dana again. And I'm going to see the private message here pop up from Christine Carson. All right. There it is. Okay. So the point I wanted to make to you here is that it's very, very easy to quickly establish a heavily encrypted, secure one-to-one -one communication with anyone. All you need to do is click on the plus symbol and add in that person's name and email address and you're on your way. Okay, now in my communication with Christine Carson here, it occurs to me that, hmm, it looks like Christine Carson might actually become a client of mine in which case I'm probably going to have some deeper communications with her. In fact, I'm probably going to need some higher level communication capabilities. For example, I might need to involve someone else in this communication, like her spouse, which she has already suggested here. I might also need to involve other people, like her business advisor or her business partner or her attorney and so on and so forth. Okay, those are higher level communication capabilities, bringing in other people. Also, there might be multiple topics about which we want to communicate. So I'm getting the sense from Christine that she's going to want me to help her with tax planning, but also with estate planning. That's okay, those would be two separate topics or two separate threads, if you will, that might involve different people and different documents as well. And finally, as documents become old or obsolete in my communication with Christine Carson, I might want the ability to completely remove those from our communication. And I might want to even remove some people from the communication as we move forward. Okay, these are all higher level communication capabilities, which I can take advantage of by going to the workspaces area. So now I'm going to click on the tab near the top left called workspaces. And as you can see here, I already have a number of workspaces that I've established. These are situations that probably have been going on for some time, they're deep communications, quite possibly with multiple people involved, lots of different messages, lots of different documents, and I'm actively managing these workspaces, okay? All right, let's create a new workspace by clicking on the plus symbol here. And I'm going to call this new workspace Client Christine Carson. All right, there it is, Client Christine Carson. And you can see that the host is Dana Shibley. That's me. I am the host because I am the creator of this workspace, okay? And as the host, I serve as the conductor, if you will, of this communication. I am the only one who can add in other people, which are guests in this communication. I am the only one who can remove some of those people. Okay, guests can't remove other guests. Only I, as the host of this workspace, can add and remove guests. Also, I'm the only one who can add in threads or topics, as we discussed earlier. And I'm the only one who can remove content, such as documents or threads that are inside of here. Okay, guests can't do those things. All right, so let's go ahead and click into this workspace, client Christine Carson, and get to work. Now we're inside the workspace called Client Christine Carson. And as we can see, there's no content in here yet, right? But the Verify system is prompting me to add a guest to this workspace. So I'm going to click on Add a Guest. And the first guest I'm going to add is Christine Carson, right? So I'll do a search for her name. There she is. And now I click Add. And you can see that Christine Carson has been added as a guest in this workspace, Client Christine Carson. And lo and behold, the Verifile system has recognized that I had already started a communication with Christine Carson over in the contacts area that we first went into, right? I already began a private message communication with Christine Carson. So the Verifile system recognizes that and understands that, oh, this would be very useful for Dana to still have access to that one-to-one -one private communication, that private message with Christine Carson. So has brought that communication thread into the workspace area here, right? 
into the client Christine Carson workspace for me to access as I choose. However, the reason that we created the workspace client Christine Carson in the first place was so that we could take advantage of some of those higher level communication capabilities that we talked about. And those are things that we can take advantage of inside of workspace threads. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol here, and I'm first going to create a workspace thread that I call tax plan. And then I'm going to create another workspace thread that we will call estate plan. There we go. Okay, first let's go into the tax planning workspace thread. And I can see here there are no messages yet and no guests have access yet to this workspace thread, right? This is private. I can also see that at the top center here, tax planning, no guests have access yet. Why is that? Because I haven't given anybody access. Let's do that. Okay, the way that I give some people access to this workspace thread is by doing the following. Okay, in Verifile, whenever you're unsure about how to move forward, when things are unclear, what you want to do is go to the gear. There are gear symbols all over the place in Verifile if you just move your cursor around. So I'm going to go to the gear, click on it, and then I click on Manage Permissions to give access to people. So I click on Manage Permissions, and I'm going to give Christine Carson access, just like that. And now I can see that Christine Carson has access to the tax planning workspace thread. But recall that she also asked me to involve her spouse, Sammy Spouse, in this communication. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. How do I bring in her spouse, Sammy? Easy. I go to the gear, click on it, click on Manage Permissions, and now I'm going to add Sammy Spouse. Now, Sammy Spouse is not in my contacts list because I have not communicated with him before. So I click here on the plus symbol next to contact. I'm going to add Sammy as a new contact. Just like that. Okay. There's Sammy. Click add one. And now I click save. And now I can see that both Christine Carson and Sammy Spouse have access to the tax planning workspace thread. So I'll type in a message here that they can both see. Click on the paperclip symbol and let me pull in several documents. How about if I pull in these documents right here. And I can just drag and drop those in, by the way, just like that. And I click Send. Okay. And now I can see that Christine Carson and Sammy Spouse have access to the message I've written here and also these four documents. And I can see those four documents expanded on over here on the right. I can quickly look at the colored tiles under each of the documents, which I can cross-reference with the colored tiles and the guests list to see who has access to which documents. And by the way, uh, as I move this around, you can uh, probably all see the gear symbol popping up. So I can click on that gear symbol if I would like. And here I can see a number of different options of things that I can do with that particular document, including renaming it, viewing the access history of exactly who has looked at that document, when, how many times, et cetera, et cetera. I can download the document, download multiple documents, and I can also delete the document if I would like to. I am the only person who can delete this document because I am the host of this workspace. Christine Carson and Sammy Spouse cannot delete any documents in here because they are guests in this workspace. Only I can delete a document. Okay, so go ahead and move on. I'm now going to click on the estate planning workspace thread. And I want to involve some people in this, so I'm going to invite them in by clicking on the gear, clicking on Manage Permission. I'm going to bring in Christine Carson and Sammy Spouse, just like that. You can see that the two of them have access. And Christine Carson has also asked me to involve her barrister, her attorney. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the gear, click on Manage Permissions, and let's say that she asks me to bring in Lisa. Okay, Lisa Lawyer. Okay. So I click add one. Save. And now I can see that Christine Carson, Lisa Lawyer, and Sammy Spouse will all have access to any communications that occur inside of here. So I'm going to type a quick message. So 
but I welcome Lisa because she just came in. All right, and let's work on a state map. Okay, I'll now click on the paperclip symbol here. All right, and let's go ahead and pull in some documents that are estate planning documents. Why don't we pull in an asset allocation document? And how about a fiduciary agreement, last will and testament document, letter of intent document, and a life insurance policy document? All right, so I'll pull in those five documents just like that. Click on send. And now, all three of those individuals, Christine Carson, Lisa Lawyer, and Sammy Spouse, have access. So these five documents, which I can see expanded on over here on the right, okay, and that's exactly what I intended. So now the four of us can communicate among each other. All right, one more thing here before we move on. Let's say that I'd like to have a place where I can have reference materials available at my fingertips whenever I'm thinking about client Christine Carson's situation. Okay, how do I do that? Easy, all I do is click on the plus symbol here, and now I'm going to create a new thread that I call my reference materials or my stuff or whatever, right? Click OK. There's a new workspace thread. I can see that it's private. No guests have access yet. Now I'm going to click on the paperclip symbol and I'm going to go ahead and pull in a handful of documents here. Why don't I bring in? asset list and cash flow report and a budget forecast. I'll bring in those three documents like that. And now you can see that those three documents reside securely inside of Verifile. Okay. So effectively I put these three documents in secure encrypted storage just for my access, right? Whenever I'm working inside of the client Christian Carson workspace. I will be able to access these three documents. Okay, so each of these documents has been individually encrypted just like any other document that I happen to be sharing with other people inside of Verifile. Okay, and as you can imagine, although this information, these three documents are only accessible to me right now, at any point in the future, I have the option to simply go to the gear next to my reference materials click on manage permissions and give access to other individuals if I would like to, okay? But I don't wanna do that just yet. So I'll just leave this as is. Okay, so hopefully now you're all getting the sense that inside of a workspace, the workspace client Christine Carson that I've created here, I have the ability to communicate one-to-one -one with any individual guest by simply clicking on their name and that opens up the private message between me and that individual that I might have begun over in the contacts area or if I want to communicate with multiple individuals in a controlled manner where I have access to these higher level communication capabilities that we've been talking about, I create a workspace thread and invite in the relevant individuals and involve the relevant messages and relevant documents. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like from one of the guests' perspective, Christine Carson. So I'm now going to go back in as Christine Carson and as Christine Carson, I can see that there's a new workspace, okay, called Client Christine Carson. So I click Christine Carson, click on it, and I can see that I'm inside the workspace, okay? And the first thing that I wanna point out here is that as Christine Carson, I only see two workspace threads, not three, right? So I'm seeing the estate planning workspace thread and the tax planning workspace thread, I do not see the third workspace thread that is in this workspace, and that workspace thread is called My Reference Materials, right? And the reason I don't see that workspace thread is that the host of this workspace, Dana Shibley, has not given me access to that third workspace thread called My Reference Materials, all right? So I don't even know that it exists, all right? And that's by design from Dana. Okay, if I go into the tax planning workspace thread, here I can see a number of different documents. I also see the alert here. And if I go in and take a look at these documents, what happens is that it clears the alert at the top here. I can also go into the estate planning workspace thread 
and I can look at a number of the different documents to clear that alert. Let's say that I decide to go into the life insurance policy, and that's of particular interest to me. So I first decide to preview that life insurance policy. Okay, that just sent an email alert to Dana, by the way, letting him know that I looked. And I also want to look at it in more detail later, so I'm going to actually download this life insurance policy document. Okay, so I did that, and that just sent another email alert to Dana. Okay, so, all right, I took a look at that, and now I'm thinking about the estate planning situation, which in reality would have probably many more messages and documents here between me, Christine Carson, and the attorney Lisa Lawyer, Dana, my accounting professional, and also Sammy Spouse. But as I look here, I reach the conclusion that, you know what? My attorney, my barrister, Lisa Lawyer, is really not adding much value here at all. And she's quite expensive. So I want to remove Lisa Lawyer from this estate planning communication thread. I don't want her to be involved in this at all anymore. Can I remove her name from this workspace thread? No, I cannot because I am a guest in this workspace. Only the host, Dana, can remove people, okay? So I'm going to ask Dana to remove Lisa Lawyer from this communication. Would I go ahead and type that message right here? Eh, probably not because Lisa Lawyer would see that, right? But I can click here on Dana's name, which opens up with him that private messages communication that we had already begun, and I'll type a quick message for him here. Uh, something along the lines of, please remove Lisa Lawyer. All right, and I'd probably provide some more detail there. Okay, and I click send. Okay, now let's go back into the system and look from Dana's perspective. So I'm back in as Dana, and I see the private message there from Christine Carson, please remove Lisa Lawyer, okay? So I can do that because I'm the host of this workspace for client Christine Carson, right? So I know that Lisa Lawyer is in the estate planning workspace thread. So I'll go into the estate planning workspace thread. And what do I do? I go to the gear, I click on manage permissions, and I remove Lisa Lawyer's access just like that. Lisa Lawyer no longer has access to any of the time and date stamped messages and the documents that are in this workspace thread. And in fact, my client, Christine Carson, has asked me to involve another attorney here instead. Easy enough. I'll simply click on the gear symbol, click on manage permissions, and I'm going to add a new attorney. Let's say I bring in Angela attorney here, okay? So my client has asked me to bring in Angela attorney. I do that and I click save. And now I can see that Angela attorney has full access to the estate planning workspace thread, including all of the possibly hundreds of time and date stamp messages that have moved back and forth between all of us, as well as all of the documents that are in here. And by the way, Angela can also access any documents or messages that were typed in by the previous individual, Lisa Lawyer, that used to be contributing to this workspace thread. So literally in about 20 seconds here, I completely removed one individual, Lisa Lawyer, brought in her replacement, Angela Attorney, and now Angela Attorney has full access to all of those communications, that full historical transcript of professional communications among all of us, okay? Very, very useful tool. Imagine trying to do that inside of email or email attachments. It's pretty darn near impossible. In Verify, you can do that in seconds. And as you can guess, at any point I need to, I can also remove Angela attorney and add in other individuals as necessary. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward here. What I want to do is I have in mind that the life insurance policy was perhaps very complicated and very important. And I, as the accounting professional, want to know exactly who's looked at that so far. So all I need to do is go to the life insurance policy, click on the gear symbol, and now I'm going to click on view access history, okay? Click, and I can see here that for the life insurance policy, Angela Attorney hasn't looked yet. Well, that's okay, I just gave her access a few minutes ago, right? Sammy Spouse hasn't looked at it yet either. But Christine Carson has access to life insurance policy twice. And if I click here, click, I can see the exact dates and times that Christine Carson has accessed 
the life insurance policy. This is very useful to me. I might see here all the time and date stamps for 20 different times that Christine Carson has looked at this particular document over the last several weeks. If she's looked at this 20 different times, it's probably a pretty good tip off to me that this particular document is very important to her, right? So it's making me aware of what's important to my client, helping me in that regard. Similarly, I can see if Christine Carson just looked at this particular document 15 minutes ago and I have a phone call scheduled with her in a half hour, that's probably a tip off that there's a very good chance she's going to want to talk about this particular document. So I can get ready. I can be on my toes for that particular conversation. All right, so all of this is helping me out, helping me better service my client. Similarly, if I close this out and look up here, what I want to point out to you is that whether you're working inside of a workspace thread or you're in a one-to-one -one private messages communication with someone, at any time, you can click on an individual's name to see when they last accessed that communication. And I can see here that Angela Attorney has not yet viewed this information, has not yet been inside this workspace thread. But if I click on Christine Carson's name, I can see the last date and time that Christine Carson was in here, giving me a sense of the recency of this information, perhaps in my client's mind. Again, just another feature that helps me be the most effective professional possible in terms of understanding what's happening with respect to the communication and what's going on on my client's side. Okay, so moving forward, I think it would be useful for you to see how electronic signatures work. So let's take a look at that. But you know, actually before we do that, I wanna point out one more thing here that's very important. When you think about workspace threads, it's important that you not only think of them in terms of places where people can upload documents, download documents, and, and type in messages and so forth, but they also serve as very effective organizational tools, if you will. You can think of each of the workspace threads as kind of a subfolder within the broader communication folder, the workspace. Client Christine Carson, in this case. So for some of your clients who would appreciate it, you can actually create what is something akin to a portfolio view for them. In other words, you might set up a workspace thread called Taxes 2020, Taxes 2019, Taxes 2018, et cetera, et cetera. So that client can go in at any time and see the information relevant to that particular time period. Similarly, if that client is engaged in real estate or heavy equipment or something to that effect, you might want to have a workspace thread that you title depreciation issues, okay? So you can organize the information very cleanly so that is professionally presented to your clients. And many of your clients will appreciate that. You probably know which ones would. Okay, let's take a look at signatures. So I'm going to go ahead now and let's go into the tax planning workspace thread. And I'm going to request a signature from Christine. All right, so I'm going to click on the paperclip symbol. And let's go ahead and pull in a document here. I'm going to pull in the document engagement letter, okay? So I've brought in an engagement letter. And as you know, if I click send here now, then that will simply share the engagement letter document, okay? But I want a signature on this document. So what I'm going to do is put a check in this box here to request signing. Now I'm going to click on send, okay? And the Verify system is prompting me to complete the request for signature. So I need to click on this orange rectangle here and indicate who I want the signature from. I want the signature from Christine Carson, okay? And I have a couple of decisions to make here. Do I want Christine Carson to have to agree to a statement of terms, such as I agree to do business electronically. Okay, and by the way, I can change this statement of terms to be anything that I would like it to be. I'll go ahead and leave it as is for now. If I do want her to have to agree to the statement of terms, I'll leave the dot and the circle here requiring that agreement. I can also click here if 
I don't feel that it's necessary for her to agree to a statement of terms. Okay, the other thing I need to decide is whether I want SMS text verification along with the signature from her. Okay, so let's say that I do want that SMS verification, so I'm going to click on yes, and I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, Christine Carson's phone number here. Just like that, and I click next. Okay, now, Here's the document, the engagement letter, and by moving my mouse, you can see the cursor move around on the screen. And all I need to do is I just scroll down here and I'm going to the signature area where I'm going to draw a little rectangle and click here to indicate to Verifile and to the client exactly what's going to go in that spot. So I want the signature to go in that location there. And let's say that I want the date to go in this location right here. And let's say that I want uh, initials to go here. I would select that. And now I simply click on Submit Request. Okay. And as some of you might have anticipated, an email alert has automatically been sent to Christine Carson, letting her know that an engagement letter awaits her signature inside of Verify. Now let's go back in as Christine Carson into the tax planning area. And as Christine Carson now, I can see that here is the engagement letter waiting for me to review and sign it. So I'm going to click on review and sign. Okay. And it is being requested of me that I agree to do business electronically. I can click no, but then I won't be allowed to proceed and sign this particular document. I'll go ahead and click yes, all right? And I now need to type in the signature code that has been delivered to me via text. So I'm going to get that. And then I click submit. Okay, and I confirm my signature. And then I confirm my signature here on the signature location and then also the date and my initials here. Okay, I have the option now to type a brief message back to Dana. I'll do that. And click Submit. And now I can see that there's a document inside of Verifile called Engagement Letter, underscore sign. And yes, an email alert has automatically been sent to Dana, letting Dana know that this signed engagement letter awaits him inside of Verifile. Okay, so I'm back in as Dana, and I'll see that signed engagement letter pop up here in just a second. There it is. Okay, so I can see the message from Christine, done, signed, and there's engagement letter underscore signed. I can click on it here or over here. Let's click on it here this time. Okay, there's the engagement letter underscore signed, and if I click on preview, I can scroll down and I can see where Christine Carson has signed, dated, and initialed this document. All right. And at any time that I need to, I can click here on view signing info, where I can see information about the source document, about the signed document, including the date and time that that occurred. And I can see the signature requester was me. Signer was Christine Carson, and I can see her IP address there as well. I can see that Christine Carson has accepted the terms. I agree to do business electronically, and there was success with the identity verification as well. All right, so all this information remains here, and I can print it out here if I would like to, either to hard copy or PDF. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that out. And since we're in looking at this particular document, I should also point out to you that at any time, I can click on preview to preview a document. And if I click on the purple pen right here, it gives me the ability to reorder pages of documents, all right? I can also click on the X symbol to delete pages in documents. And I can click on add annotation right here in order to add annotation to any document. 
looks like that. Okay. And I can choose what font I would like and so forth. All right. So very, very handy. Okay. Another thing you should know that's very handy. I know that you all know how to share information with other people inside of Verifile by simply going to the gear symbol, clicking on the gear symbol, and then using manage permissions. However, you should know that there's a shortcut if you're sharing information inside of a workspace here. All you need to do is you can click on any document, click on the thumbnail for the document, and you do have the ability to drag and drop that document over into other workspace threads or into private messages for any individuals in the workspace as well. Okay, very easy to do. That's a nice shortcut for you. Okay. So let's go ahead and move forward. Hopefully all of you are getting a sense for how easy it is to use Verifile to organize information and securely share information with anybody uh, where you can both rest well at night knowing that your information is very secure inside of Verifile. But I'd like to point out something here that is not necessarily evident to people because it's so simple, but it's very powerful. And that's the fact that we are essentially or we're effectively managing all the information for client Christine Carson inside of this single interface here. That's very, very powerful because when you have all of this information in a single location, it makes that information more tangible, more concrete, if you will, which allows you to more effectively think strategically how to move the situation forward. In our area of the world here in Silicon Valley, there are many companies that would try and have you think that powerful software is characterized as software that has multiple pages and multiple modules that you buy up to and so on and so forth. But the fact is that nothing could be farther from the truth, okay? Great software is characterized as software that allows you to understand more while looking at less. It allows you to accomplish more while doing less, and your Verifile Pro system captures that essence. There's much that you can accomplish here in a very organized, tight environment where you can wrap your head around the entire situation, okay? So another nice thing about having all the information related to client Christine Carson in this single workspace here is that this serves as a very effective electronic cue card, if you will. In other words, if I'm working on my home screen here, okay, and let's say I get a call out of the blue from someone that I haven't talked to in four months, and that person immediately jumps into very extreme detail talking about their particular situation, even though I haven't thought about that information in those months, and I've talked to 500 different people in the interim, it sure is very handy that I can simply go to that person's particular workspace, in this case it might be a Christine Carson who has called me, and I can simply go to Christine Carson's workspace, and there I can immediately see all the people that are involved, also the various key topics, and the different documents that are involved as well. That's all right there at my fingertips to see so that I can immediately bring my mind back to that particular place where I can quickly begin professionally servicing that client. All right, very, very useful. And by the way, in your industry, it turns out to be the case that best practice is having a single workspace for each of your clients, right? So you have that information all in one place for them. In fact, if you talk to people who've been using Verifile for quite some time, it turns out to be the case that the reason many people start using Verifile is because of all of the security benefits that I told you about. However, over time, what they come to learn is that the thing that makes them really appreciate Verifile is the fact that all of this information resides in a single place for them. It makes them very productive in their working with their clients. Okay, let's move forward. So I'm going to now go ahead and click on the home icon. And let's take a look at some other workspaces here that I think will be relevant to at least some of you, probably to many of you. All right, so. Let's first take a look at the workspace that I've set up in advance called Company ABC Financial Reports and Records. All right, so click, I'm in this workspace. You can see the title of the workspace at the top here, and these guest 
that are listed here are employees in company ABC. So I can click on any of these guest names at any time to communicate one-to-one -one with them. And as you can see here, I've also set up a number of workspace threads with appropriate people involved in each of the workspace threads. So I can communicate with those individuals about relevant information as necessary. Okay, let's go back home here and let's look at another situation. Okay, here's another workspace called Rockefeller Family. Some of you probably work with individuals who represent family or extended family interests, also involving a number of professional service providers, perhaps. And perhaps it's a high net worth family, so there are a number of business interests involved and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look here at such a family, the Rockefeller family. So now we're inside the workspace for the Rockefeller family. And let's say that my main contact is Ricky Rockefeller. And inside of this workspace are a number of different documents that many of Ricky Rockefeller's contacts would be interested in. For example, he has immediate and extended family members, including Susie's stepsister and also Rhonda Rockefeller. All right. He also has a uh, rather large professional services network, including Larry Lenderbank, an executive, his business partner, and also Arnold Advisor. Many of these people are interested in documents that are related to Ricky Rockefeller, including his life insurance policy, his last will and testament, and also his asset list, okay? And as you can see here, I've also set up a number of workspace threads, including tax considerations, estate planning, and legal requirements to group all of the people in Ricky Rockefeller's network as necessary. And so not only am I helping Ricky Rockefeller with all of his financial tax planning and so on and so forth, managing all that information. But I'm effectively also serving as a professional steward of his information and sharing that sensitive information on an as directed and as necessary basis with his network of family members and also professional services providers, right? And I have confirmation of if and when every single one of those people has looked at or downloaded any information, all right? So I'm really upping my game here in terms of servicing Ricky Rockefeller and making myself much more indispensable to him, all right? In stewarding this information across his network as necessary, okay? And of course, there's also the added benefit of me getting exposure to these various individuals in his network some of whom might become clients of mine in the future. So let's move ahead. All right, we're back at the home screen here. One thing I want to point out to you is, as you know, you can go and click on the contacts tab at the top. You can click on the plus symbol, which allows you to add contact individually by simply adding in their name and email address, but you can also bulk import contacts if you would like. And the way that you do that is simply by clicking here import contacts from CSV file, all right? This lets you bring in, in bulk, contacts from other software systems that you might be using. The CSV file format is the standard file format used by software companies to export and import contact information. And the benefit of doing this is that if you bulk import contacts, you'll have a full list of contacts over here on the left to immediately click on any of them, any individual, and quickly spark up a one-to-one -one secure communication with that individual without having to worry about typing in that person's name and email address, et cetera, et cetera. Also, when you're building out a workspace, by creating workspace threads, you can just instantly pull people in, again, without having to worry about typing in their name and email address on a one-by-one -one basis, all right? You're just up and rolling. So, by the way, if you go ahead and go to YouTube and type in Verifile Contact, you'll see a very brief tutorial there that shows you how to bulk import contact from other software systems. All right, moving ahead here. I'm going to click on my name at the top right-hand corner of the screen and then click on account settings. If you do that in your system, you will see that this is where you can edit your name. You can edit your signature. You can also swap out the CPA Canada logo for any logo of your choosing. 
you can see how much of your encrypted storage space that you have used inside of Verifile. I can see that I've used 14 megabytes of 100 gigabytes of my uh, CelluCrypt encrypted storage space. And don't check me on my math here, but I believe that is about two one hundredths of one percent of my allotted storage space inside of Verifile. I can see that automatically send alerts is on. This is what makes it so that when I add in a message or a document to Verifile, Verifile automatically sends an email alert to the intended recipient or recipients. And I can see that document activity alerts is on. This is what makes it so that I receive an email alert whenever a document that I share with someone has been looked at, downloaded, or copied to someone else inside of Verifile. And I have message edit as on. Okay, so people can edit their messages, whether that's in a private message or in a workspace thread. Okay, I don't know that some of you may want to turn that off. Okay, and block list. I have zero users that I have blocked. Blocking someone is not a bad thing inside of Verifile. All it does is make it so that if somebody shares information with you, you do not receive an email alert if that person has been blocked. So for example, there are a couple of people here that I work with at Verifile that literally use Verifile all day long, just like I do, and they're sharing information with me every single day, okay? I don't need to receive an email alert every single time those people share information with me because I will definitely see the internal alerts inside of Verifile and know that that information is there. And they might just yell across to me as well and let me know that that information is available. So I don't need email alerts and I might very well decide to block those individuals, okay? And by the way, to block an individual, all you need to do is go to their name in the contacts area and click on the gear symbol and you can see there that you are able to block individuals. Okay, security settings. I can click here and change my password if I would like. I can also click here on session management and this will enable me to see any sessions of Verifile that I have open on other browsers or other devices so that I can go ahead and close those out. And I also have the ability to grab on this little slider right here, which allows me to indicate to Verifile the amount of time after which, if I have been inactive in my Verifile system, that Verifile should automatically sign me out. I like to keep that at about one or two hours. So this is very handy, especially for those of you who might sometimes forget to log out of your Verifile system. Okay, I can see here that two-factor authentication is on. That is the code that changes every 30 seconds on my mobile phone that we talked about at the beginning of today's demonstration. And password reset capability is on. So let me talk about this briefly. Some of you might be aware that arguably the biggest security weakness on the internet is that posed by email. There is a large, robust black market for email credentials out there. And if someone gets a hold of your email credentials, there's a very high likelihood they'll be able to gain full access to your email account. So in your email account, they will go ahead and rifle through your sent box, through your trash box, and your various folders, and look for information to monetize, of course. But some of those individuals will dig deeper and look for evidence of various online services that you're using and then proceed to those various online services and click on the link that says something along the lines of, help me, I need a new password, or I'd like to reset my password. And then in conjunction with control of your email account, which receives that password reset email, attempt to reset each of those passwords, attempting to hijack a good portion of your online identity. So this type of thing is happening to people every single day. With Verifile, we give you the opportunity to block that weakness, okay? By turning off password reset capability. If you turn off password reset capability and someone gets into your email account and then attempts to ping your Verifile account and reset your password, 
Verifile will not let them reset your password from the outside, okay? So this is a very powerful security feature. In fact, I use it and rest very well at night knowing that all of my information inside of Verifile is safe and secure. However, I also understand that by turning off password reset capability, I have effectively taken responsibility for my encryption and all of my security. This is a shorthand way of saying I have taken the responsibility of writing that password down and putting it someplace safe and secure because if you forget your password, nobody can get you access to your Verifile account, okay? So I probably just scared a number of you away, but some of you probably are looking for that level of security and it's here in Verifile if you want it. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. A couple things I want to leave in your mind. Remember, in Verifile, whenever things are unclear, regardless of where you are, go ahead and look for the gear. If you click on the gear symbol, you'll find a number of different options for things that you can do, okay? If you wanna have a quick, simple, secure one-to-one -one communication with somebody, just go into the contacts area, add their name and email address, and away you go, all right? But if you wanna have a deeper communication, a professional communication with that person, it might involve other individuals, lots of documents, et cetera, et cetera, higher level communication, then you should go ahead and create a workspace to communicate with that person in, okay? All right. So hopefully all of you now have a good sense for Verifile and how to use it to communicate professionally. And I encourage you to dive in. And if you have any questions at all, just reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you out with any additional information or with answering any questions at all that you may have. We appreciate that CPA Canada has decided to partner with us here at Verifile to extend this security to all of you members. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.